to really pay attention to how I feel after hanging out with someone because it's like, am I friends with this person just because it's been a long time? Do like I leave feeling drained and like no energy or do I leave yes. feeling energized and uplifted because those are the people you want to spend your time with. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of The Report Saturday edition. And I got my favorite co-host. She's back in the saddle. I got my girl, A. Johns, Alex Johnson. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How's it going? Oh, it's going amazing. Uh, was just out in the boat shooting a little content with Trinity. We got some sunshine outside. Um, and you guys are heading out to uh, Lake Chelan this weekend. Yes, I'm so excited. Me and a couple of the girls on the team are heading up tomorrow morning. And... Um, Megan has planned, Megan, our, our marketing manager, has planned a little grand reopening party at the hotel on Saturday. So exciting. So it's going to be really cool. We have live music. We have barbecue. We have some little like wine tasting pours, pickleball. Um, we're doing some hotel tours uh, for the community. And so it's going to be really fun. I've never been up there. I've actually never been to Seattle either. Yeah, and you're a part owner of the hotel. You, <laughs> yeah. you got you to see if this thing's really real. I know. So I've heard really good things about Lake Chelan, especially Chelan or Chelan? Lake Chelan. Chelan. Uh, in the summer, some people call it like the Tahoe of Washington. Um, but I think, yeah, it'll be great to see the hotel and just kind of get plugged into the community. I think that's the goal because I think that's really important for totally. hotels to just get plugged in with the community. So we're going to... Uh, we're going to do that and it should be a good time. I'm excited. Yeah. Shout out to Megan and the rest of the team for uh, putting it all together. Yeah. I know Andrea's going as well. Sarah's going as well. And um, yeah. Oh, and Monica. And Monica. Um, so five of you going up. Yeah. And um, yeah. So shout out to you guys for all putting it together with the new pickleball court that just went in. We got the new branding, new signage. So um, and this is the best time of year weather wise yeah. up there. So that should be super exciting. I'm a little bit jealous. Not going to lie <laughs> that I don't get to come and uh, You've enjoy. You've been up there though. But I've been up there, and uh, I'll go up there again. Um, I do want to go visit a lot of the hotels here with the content team and shoot some content, do some uh, property tours and some uh, renovation updates, that sort of thing. So uh, looking forward to that. But, um, yeah, I mean, for the listeners, uh, I'm also looking forward to enjoying the last couple of weeks of summer. We got, uh, man, Labor Day weekend's less than two weeks away. I can't believe it. It's going and then so fast. It's going to be fall time before we know it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, go it's going super fast, but I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah, excited for it. We got our retreat for our mastermind communities uh, coming up September 20th through the 22nd. So looking forward to that. That's out here in San Diego. And I'm going to uh, take a break from drinking again. Uh, September 3rd, day after Labor Day, I'm going to dial it again. Um, do at least 60 days. Um, maybe I'll do 75. Maybe I'll do more. I don't know. But I'm going to do at least 60 days and dial things again. So looking forward to that. Um, but that said, that brings us to today's episode and topic. Um, why you cannot grow with people who do not like how growth looks on you. Um, this is one of my biggest life lessons that I've learned over the last few years. Um, that's all about getting the right rooms. That's how this game works. And um, unfortunately, I feel like the majority of people out there um, are negative. They're going to be naysayers. They're going to be pessimistic. They are going to give you every single reason in the book to why your dreams are never going to work. And unfortunately, uh, you got to learn to uh, either cut out this noise um, and not pay attention to it, or you have to completely remove these individuals from your circle. Um, I had a lot of that kind of uh, energy uh, like five years ago, six years ago, six years ago. I don't around that energy at all anymore. Like, I do yeah. not allow anyone in my circle that uh, is that way. I only hang out with people that inspire me, like literally. And I'm, so I'm, for me, I'm not used to it anymore, but I yeah. used to be around it. I know a lot of people that are around it. Now when I see it, I sense it right away. I'm like, yo, I can't do it. Yeah. You know, you see it. Yeah. I think sometimes when you're in it, um, I feel like I used to be in that same position and kind of like a lot of negativity, uh, a, a lot of just like Debbie Downers. And it's hard to kind of when you're in it and it's surrounding you, sometimes it's hard to realize it because you're just kind of, you know, you're all the same. You're soaking it up and you're kind of maybe like participating. Um, but I think eventually as you grow out of it and you like replace your circle and you start hanging out with others it's interesting to see then you kind of go back to that group or you go back to that certain those certain people and it's so apparent and it's cool to see the growth that you know you have had but yeah sometimes when you're in it you're just so sucked into it because you're you're going to kind of morph to who you're around so sometimes it's a slow process but um and yeah. if that's all you know because yeah. like for some people that's like their circle that's their family 
Um, and that's all they know. Yeah. They don't even know what it's like to hang out with people that um, inspire them, uplift them, and are in places that they want to be or maybe dream of being in. And, um, you know, if you never experienced that before, like, go fucking start hanging out with uh, some other people. Go make some new friends. Go yeah. to some networking events. Go to meetups. Um, go to some conferences. Like, like figure out a way to, like, connect with, with folks that yeah. are uh, inspiring and, um, you know, in places that you want to go. And I promise you, you're going to be like, whoa, this is a whole new ball game. It's yeah. a whole new perspective on life. And, and things do get a lot easier. The growth yeah. happens. Uh, it's almost like it's not a question of if the growth is going to happen. It's just a matter of when because you're just surrounded by it. Um, I, I actually, here's a story um, that I'll share. Uh, one of my best friends growing up, um, we uh, went to college together. So from 18 to 22, we lived in a bunch of different places together. Um, we would party, lived in a bunch of places with roommates. And um, one of my best friends, and uh, he actually lives here in Little Italy, like, like three blocks from our office in uh, the Savina building. I'm not going to say names, but um, <laughs> yeah, like three and a half years ago, I was like really like getting heavy in the real estate game. This is 2021. Mm -hmm. I was doing my first capital raise uh, for the Arbors, uh, apartments, 20, 150 unit townhome community in North Carolina, which we still own today, um, with partners and with investors. But I was doing my first capital raise and I remember him just being like really negative. Um, just kind of like, why would you raise money for an apartment deal? Like, um, blah, blah, blah. Or like I would go out to dinner with him and his girlfriend and they'd be like, Oh, why are you tipping? Like, why are you tipping so much? And like, it just, yeah. I felt every time I hung out with them, my energy was just sucked yeah. dry. Yeah. And every time I walked away from an outing with them, I was like, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't really feel a good vibe anymore. Yeah. Everything was very judgmental. Everything was very negative. Like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? This is never going to work. I remember them saying like, oh, the real estate game's never going to work for you. Like, why yeah. are you wasting your time? Yeah. And um, yeah. And so I ended up removing him from my life. I, I, had, I had had a conversation. I was like, hey, like, just so you guys know, this is probably like in 2020. I was like, just so you guys know, I don't know if you're aware of it, but this is how you can make others feel at certain times. And they didn't change at all. They were like, okay, cool, whatever. And then they were like right back at it. Yeah. And they did this to other friends too, but I was the only one that actually said something. And I just completely removed them from my life. I was like, thank you, but no thank you. And yeah. um, I'm gonna do my own thing. And I completely removed them, removed them from my life. And now I haven't talked to them in a long time, yeah. um, but they know what's up. They know what's up. I, I know um, I've seen them around like the neighborhood a couple times and, you know, we say what's up, but that's it. But they know what's up and it is what it is. And I don't I don't need like closure. I'm going to go back to it. But I know that I wouldn't be where I'm at today had I still been in, in that toxic environment. Yeah, I think sometimes it's hard if it's at the you know, at the beginning, if it's someone you've known for a long time, mm -hmm. you uh, you know, you, you feel like a strong bond with. And um, but then like. Like you said, I think it's important and something I've tried to do is to really pay attention to how I feel after hanging out with someone because it's like, am I friends with this person just because it's been a long time? Do like I leave feeling drained and like no energy or do I leave yes. feeling energized and uplifted? Because those are the people you want to spend your time with and just to like be more intentional with my time too. So I think, you know, when you're younger, you just like say yes to everything. You hang out with everyone and you're spending time with like all these different groups of people and it's fine. But then like as you get older, like for me, at least I want to be way more intentional with my time mm -hmm. and spend it with those that are going to like actually add value or like energize me, um, you know, because life's too short. And um, yeah, you, you just can't feel bad cutting those people out. Sometimes it's necessary. And I, I'm sure if you were to like hang out with them now, it would be just like such a drastic difference, but it's important to, I, I think, pay attention to that and, and be more intentional. If you love real estate investing, passive income and tax benefits, but don't have the time, my company, Summers Capital, is buying boutique hotels right now. We source the deals, we renovate the properties, and we even handle all the day-to-day -day management, making it truly hands-off for our investors. If you wanna learn more to see if we can help you, visit summerscapital.com slash invest to book a call with our team. Again, that's summerscapital.com slash invest. Now back to the show. Yeah, if we hung out now, I think they would respect what I'm doing. Yeah, um, well, yeah, of course. Probably a mutual because level of respect. <laughs> but um, I think what you you said a couple things that resonate. Like like starting is about saying yes. Yeah. Growing is about saying no. Mm -hmm. And you said send, spend time with those who are intentional about how they spend time. So mm -hmm. like, I couldn't agree with that more. Like so many people were like reach out and they're like oh like let's grab coffee and see if there's any synergies. And it's like well this person must not be like a high producing person if they like have the free time just to go grab coffee and see if there's synergies. Like I wouldn't go to Grant Cardone and be like, yo Grant, 
Yeah. Let's let's just go grab some coffee and see if we have any synergies, dog. Like, yeah. You know, it's just like you don't you don't do that, right? And so um, that's one. But also, I think like one of the biggest tales is like is when you hang out with your friends or whoever it might be, like ask yourself, are they more concerned about talking about the past? Yeah. Or more concerned about talking about the future? Yeah. That's because when you one. get around uh, people that uh, have the scarcity mindset, the naysayers, they're pessimistic. Um, they tend to just want to talk about the past and, yeah. and they don't talk about the future. Mm -hmm. um, and you get around people that are inspiring, they're making moves in life and they're actually like growing. They are more concerned about talking about the future than about the past. The past is the past. I can't change it. Yep. Yeah, it's great to like look at photos and reminisce every now and then. I think, yes, do it. It's important. But like 99% of the time, I'm, I'm thinking about tomorrow. Yeah. I can't change the past and life is already short enough as it is. I always say the best way to measure how much time we left, have left is months, right? not years, but months. And the average life expectancy for a male is 77 years old. I'm 39 now. So I have roughly 450 months left before I hit that age. That's going to go by like that. And so with life being short enough as it is, why do I want to spend any time worrying about the past when I can't even change it? I'm like, let me just worry about the, the remaining 450 months I have I left, right? So um, I don't know. I think um, for anyone out there, if you feel stuck, you feel like you're in a circle to where, um, you know, friends don't want you to grow, um, know that you can change it. And getting in the right rooms is like the most important part of this game. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, uh, get in rooms where your dreams are others' realities. It's yeah. the quickest way to improve your life. And um, you can't grow with those who don't like how growth looks on you. It's as simple as that. So if people are trying to pull you down, they don't want you to level up. They don't want you to grow. They're not encouraging you. They're not happy for your growth. Like you need to remove that. Otherwise, you will always stay stagnant and you will never grow. And this doesn't mean you need to like completely eliminate them like I did. You can. Yeah. Uh, you can just be like, yo, dog, like let's let's hang once a month. Yeah. And that's it. You know, and you can go out to lunch, hang with them for a month or once a month. And um, that's it. All right. Or maybe it's family members. You don't have to cut out family. You, you are born into whatever family you're born into. Um, but you can limit the amount of time you hang out with certain people and that's OK, too. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think, you know, for your situation, it's or for anyone's, you know, sometimes it does kind of have to be cold turkey cut out. But sometimes it's, you know, it's gradual. Like if you, you know, start going to like these real estate meetups or if you start joining a club and you just start focusing on your goals and your interests and what makes you feel good and what you want to do. I think sometimes naturally and gradually, like you, you know, you'll start spending more time with certain people and less time with others. And like, that's okay. It's kind of part of life. And I think sometimes like for me anyway, sometimes I feel a little bit guilty or I feel like, Oh, I'm, you know, a bad friend or, you know, I haven't seen this person in so long, but everyone's so busy too. Everyone's focused on themselves. So I think if you just focus on what you want to focus on, I think naturally you'll, you'll be connected and you'll be drawn to the people that you're supposed to be uh, surrounding yourself with. You will. And here's one more thing, uh, just to go full circle and close this loop. Um, the more you say no to potential friendships or relationships and dating or potential business opportunities in business, um, the closer you would get to the person that you're actually supposed to or you're sub meant to be with, whether it's a friend or a business partner or an opportunity. And you don't have to say yes to everyone. And honestly, like people don't like being told no. Yeah. If you tell people no, that opportunity is still going to be there for you. <laughs> that door is still going to be open for you a year from now two years from now. If anything, they're going to want to hang out with you even more. And so it's OK to say no to a lot of things. And um, those that say no and stay laser focused tend to win the game. That's how this game works. So uh, I think the takeaway is if you are in a circle to where uh, you feel stuck, your friends don't want you to grow, you're with naysayers, they're pointing out all the negative reasons why you're not going to be able to achieve your goals, then uh, it's time to pivot. Um, it's time to change. And uh, those who pivot win the game. Without change, there will be no growth. And uh, get in rooms where your dreams are others' realities because you cannot grow with people who do not like how growth looks on you. I think this concludes this edition of the Saturday edition. She's Alex A. Johns Johnson <laughs> going to Lake Chelan, Washington this weekend. I'm Let's Rich Summers. Listeners, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Let's go. Peace. Let's go. Peace.